Americans see the Middle East on the brink, with an Israeli ground invasion of Gaza set to occur any day now. Secretary of State Tony Blinken has been over there for days. And someone even leaked his itinerary down to the excruciating detail to the New York Times today. Did you read that? A Secretary of State going there, okay, that's one thing. But why on earth is Joe Biden flying to Israel? What's the purpose? Does Israel really need another distraction? Or a doddering Biden to look over the shoulder of Netanyahu? And then the cancellation of the summit with the Middle East leaders that I mentioned earlier, that's just embarrassing. And it's an obvious sign that they neither fear the U.S. nor want our help in defusing the situation. Either way, another black eye for an already battered foreign policy reputation. Joining us now, Ben Domenich, Fox News contributor and editor-at-large of The Spectator, and Ned Ryan, founder and CEO of American Majority. Ben, this seems like more performance art than artful diplomacy. Yeah, just a little bit, Laura. I mean, I don't think anybody actually wants Joe Biden in the room for any of this. It's not like he's going to add anything to the discussion. Really, you're just going to have to sit there and put up with him doddering, as he does in so many of these foreign policy situations, you know, pretending like he's still the head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and meandering and uh, recollecting the past, you know, get t telling old fish stories and the like. Look, the, the Biden administration has all sorts of things to answer for as when it comes to uh, implementing policies that led us up to this crisis, that led us up to this war, of coddling Iran for so long, the, the JV team from the Obama uh, era, they're all back in charge. They've led us to this point, and the fact that he's going over there, is it, it's totally a distraction. It's not going to help at all. And frankly, the Israelis are perfectly capable of responding Maybe to this Maybe we should themselves. send Susan Rice over there and Cheryl Mills. Like, get the whole yeah. crowd oh, yeah. back get together. Get the whole gang back yeah. together. Um, let's, let's talk about this a little bit, though, Ned, because... It's, it's, it's more than just symbolism. It's also a, a reality on the ground. There are fires reported outside the U.S. Embassy in Lebanon tonight. There are other protests that are growing across the globe. So Biden could actually be adding kerosene to the fire instead of diffusing the situation. No, I, I don't disagree with that at all, Laura. I mean, it is his incredible weakness and, as Ben pointed out, failed policies that, that are literally melting the world. If you think about his, his foreign policy writ large, whether it's in Europe or it's in the Middle East, I mean, the, the world is collapsing because of his weakness, because of his pursuit of failed policies, which are a continuation of Obama's failed policies. And, and here we stand finding ourselves, I mean, again, Iran has, has been empowered by Biden, not only with, with releasing cash, but also because he's lifted sanctions, it's given him another 80 to 90 billion in oil revenue since he began his administration, which to highlight how much that is, in the last year of Trump, it was only 7.9 billion. That's a lot of money to fund Hamas and Hezbollah. And then on top of that, uh, Laura, the, the amazing part to me is him showing up in Israel, which he's been undercutting for the last two and a half years, really demonstrating to its enemies, he doesn't care about Israel or its leadership. And then we find out today, insult to injury, that Biden's nominee for the ambassador to Israel is Jack Lew, who oversaw the infamous transfer of pallets of cash to Iran under Obama. The complete disdain that Biden has shown Israel has empowered his enemies, uh, their enemies, and now he's empowered Iran even more. This is all for his, all of his doing, and he's only going to make the situation worse until they, re, until they decide that there will not be a continuation of the failed Iranian policy the Middle East will continue to be destabilized. And I also make the further point that a weak America at home mm -hmm. is not a strong America abroad. When our economy is in the situation it is, that doesn't help either. No, it doesn't help at all. And Laura, I, I think the thing that we should be most concerned about is if Joe Biden goes over there and decides to really meddle Hold in, off Israel. In, in what Israel wants to do. We've seen right. this kind of creeping uh, movement in a direction that basically says, well, you know, the Israelis, we don't want to overreact too much to the worst attack on the Jewish people since the end of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, don't, we don't want things to go too far. No, they should be left to solve their own business. They're perfectly capable of doing it themselves. And Joe Biden has no business uh, lecturing them about strategy or what he believes they I ought mean, to do in this situation. They couldn't withdraw 100%. from Afghanistan. Ned. I mean, he's going over there to tell the Israelis how to run their uh, military uh, response to, to Gaza. And meanwhile, you got the Progressive Caucus with Tlaib saying, back off, basically, don't you dare. I mean, he's getting push, uh, pushback from his own uh, left flank. The, the most important thing that Biden can do, literally, in this situation is shut up and let Israel deal with Hamas in a definitive way. 
that it's decimated and never rises up again as a threat to Israel. The most important thing is we stay out of Israel's way in this moment. And, and, and the, the other thing that we can do as we stay out of Israel's way is make sure that Iran, China, Russia, whoever else keeps their distance as well. Let Israel deal with the threat and stay out of their way. That's the most important thing the Biden administration can do, but I agree with Ben. There's a reason that Blinken's been over there. There's a reason, reason that Biden is going. And I suspect they're trying to talk Israel out of doing what it needs to do to remove Hamas as a threat, which is shameful. And Blink yeah, Blinken's getting his mail forwarded over there. He's been so long. I mean, he's been there for, what, 10 days? Or yeah. Back and forth. Panel, great to see you both. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.